Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to uh, after 4th of July, sweltering hot summer evening in California. It's been so hot around here lately, it reminds me of my date palm moving days around Mecca and Thermal, California. It's been really hot. Anyway, I'm taking advantage of the cool down in the evening and I'm putting together another, let me grab my stuff here, ill prepared, another coffee can guitar. Um, and so I'm just wrapping up uh, the glue up of the neck and I'm going to carry on with that. Um, I think you all remember this guitar I built a couple episodes ago out of a coffee can. Uh, I took this out and had somebody play it and we're going to catch that at the end of the video. Now let's put this aside here and um, Let's talk a little bit about this. This was my last episode, this stomp box. And believe it or not, I had a really good response about this. How not to build a cigar box guitar, but how to build yourself a drummer out of a box. Now I got a couple more uh, stunts up my sleeve along those lines when it comes to percussion. And that's what this episode's about. I'm going to show you a quick way to build a kick drum and a cymbal, a kick cymbal, out of stuff you can typically find at a yard sale or a thrift store. All right, the first thing we're going to do is get this coffee can guitar mess off the bench and give ourselves a little room to work. There we go. Now, if you are going to use percussion drums, you are going to need this tool. This is a little, it's almost like a nut driver, but every drummer has one. And they work on all kinds of stuff about drums, but especially kick pedals. Drummers use kick pedals. Your hands are going to be full of guitar, so you're going to want to use a kick pedal. This thing is as important to you as a slide is for your guitar. So don't leave home without it. For example, if I want to adjust this up and down, I need to loosen this up and then tighten it. Get one of these drum keys. So let's talk a little bit about kick pedals. Don't go out and buy some fancy brand new kick pedal. You want to remember that every day somebody decides they're going to be a drummer and they go out and buy new kick pedals. Now, at the same time, 10 people the same day decide they're done being a drummer and they got this kind of stuff in their garage. Now, I like this one. This is an old Slingerland. Um, I modified it. I put a tennis ball on here by simply taking a piece of all thread and a couple and double nutted it and used uh, washers and then mashed this so it can't come off. But this has an old leather strap. And you just do this. Um, you can adjust the tension on the spring as to how far this comes back and how far the stroke is here. Um, I got this for about 20 bucks. I could probably easily sell it on eBay for 100 bucks. These things are desirable and old, but this is going nowhere. Um, but I want you to notice that the action on this is just basically coming from back here and going forward like that. Now there's another kind of pedal I want to show you. It started off having the same action being up here, you kick it down. But what I've done with this one is what this is going to be striking is laying flat. So I'm going to have a cymbal down here and I want to be able to adjust this. So I basically take all this stuff off, pull the shaft out, pull this stuff off, pull the chain drive off of it and then rotate this in here this way and so instead of having this up here like so it starts off being here so the action with your foot is this and then whatever here is here is in the way uh, and gets hit so again here's my two paddles i've got one that i use for a kick symbol and i've got the slingerland which is used for the bass drum or the kick drum one more time do not leave home without one of these. Everywhere you look on these pedals, you're adjusting with this. If you're going to set up on the street, if you're going to play a club, 
you want to be able to put this stuff together really quick. Now let's take a look at the drums. Have you ever seen one of these? They call them jerry cans or just a five gallon gas can made out of metal. So what does that, this have to do with a drum? Everything. Now I want you to notice that the bottom of this can is inset like so. And it's got a lip and that's really important. So the first thing we want to do is as always we find out where the center of something is and using our trusty metric ruler we find out that this is 340 millimeters wide. So half of 340 is 170. So we just rotate this up here and make a mark at 170. Now I've kind of gotten ahead of myself here. You can see what's happening. So 170, the middle is right here. And you can tell I've taken a bolt cutter and just nipped this. You can use a hacksaw, you could do, do just about anything. I wouldn't use a cutting torch, especially if there's been gasoline in one of these cans, but you're just basically nipping this. You're grabbing anything that you can use to get a hold of this, and you're just bending it up and creating a lip right here. Now these kick pedals, they have a clamp system here. This one has a wing nut in the back, and then you tighten this down. But this is what clamps on the drum. So we've made this flange right here for this to attach to. So how wide do you cut this? Well, you measure the clamping area on your kick drum. This is about 100. So you come off the center point, which is 170 or whatever the center is on your gas can. And you measure half of whatever the width of your kick drum clamp is or your your kick pedal clamp is you half that and you mark that up there so i'm going to go 50 from the center here and 50 from the center this way okay so you see the can sits flat um i just my kick pedal fits right in there like that i tighten it up the clamp up like this Put the wing nut down and literally in a matter of minutes I have a kick drum. Now I can open up the lid up here. Move the camera. I can take this off. I could put water in here to get a tone. I can screw a drill uh, through here. Put a piece of all thread let me get where i can see you drill a hole here take this out drill a hole here put a piece of all thread through there uh run up a pair of license plates or something and use it as a, as a symbol leave this on put it halfway off tighten it whatever to get my tone all right it doesn't get any better than that or any cheaper than that one last tip for you never waste the opportunity to customize your stuff where people just look at it and go wow that is the coolest thing i ever saw and so right here you've got the big face to advertise who you are and in this case this was for my daughter tammy's one girl band she did great at the talent show now check this out this is an old turkey pan yeah just a turkey pan with a bolt run through it and one of these cheap tambourines is kind of funny you saw um jesse may hampill used to have a pair of platform shoes and she would put one of these on her heel and kick drum this but the important part about this is it's cheap you drill one hole you put a bolt through it use a wing nut or whatever you want so this comes on and off easily but you see this lip right here that's the most important part because i bring in my kick pedal that's been adjusted down and i can clamp this right on let's take a look right here right there that clamps right on this lip of this pan now you're probably saying 
well somebody's going to be missing the turkey pan about thanksgiving well don't worry about that i am out of the kindness of my heart going to put up a video on how to use a ron popeil rotisserie oven to replace this chicken pan or turkey pan and that way everyone will be happy worst case scenario you go buy one a brand new one but then it looks like your first day and you don't want that again i'm just using this wrench to tighten everything down right here and there we go if that sounds a little tangy for you guess what you can improvise you can use something like this you could use a crown royal bag i like this uh remember that movie white buffalo well the playwright that did it and the writer was named richard sale and uh that come off of his yacht so a little beverly hills trivia but you can soften this up by putting something on there like that or check this out yeah, my handkerchief with two ears of orange corn on it. I bet you haven't seen that before. But you can soften this up like this or whatever you want to do. So, there's your drum set in five minutes or less. All right, wasn't that easy? You know that if you're going to play cigar box guitars and do it in public, you're going to end up, like I've said in my last video, being a one-man band so you got a couple percussion instruments that are pretty easy to make and i hope that helps you out now as always there's an email address for me at the end of the video i really like getting your comments and there's also the subscribe button around one in the middle as well as a couple of links to playlists one is uh my 30 or so some videos to tell you a little bit about cigar box guitars and how to make them and then there's an increasing in number set of videos in a playlist about these oddball instruments and i'm going to put this episode in there now i talked about the coffee can guitar uh, that i made a couple of videos back there's a link to that up in the icard section there anyway i got to take this into long beach when i saw a band that we've talked about before smokestack relics two young men out of colorado i got to see them in long beach on the fourth of july so that evening there was fireworks blazing outside they were blazing inside and these kids are good they play trash blues and this kid you just pick something up and hand it to him never played it before in his life you tell him it's tuned it's three strings it's tuned g d g and he went to town so we'll close out this episode with a clip of smokestack relics playing this guitar thanks for watching and see you next time